Hi everyone, welcome back to WLG Academy and welcome back to Introduction to Programming using Java. So continuing our journey, let's open again IntelliJ Community and going back to what we were talking about in the previous video, probably it was a bit small, so let's increase a little bit here. We were talking about primitive data types. So we know that in Java we have eight primitive data types, basically six of them are numeric. Uh, one is Boolean, uh, where it's going to store true or false values literally you're going to write true or false and we have one that's going to store single character now let's see how we can declare how can we tell our computer hey i would like to store a number i would like to store like a huge number i want to store like something boolean and something uh character so i'm going to keep this uh open and we are going to go back and forth here now let's go back to our intellij remember this is our intellij here we have our project. If your project is gone, just make sure that you can press Alt 1 or you can come here. And if you, for example, select packages or if you change it, just click here on project. Now let's create another, another class here. So right click uh, to make things a little bit more simple for you. That's completely not advised when you are doing something in real life because classes in real life, they should have a meaningful name something that represents a real world we're going to talk about uh classes in details when we get to job one for all but basically here i just want to make things a little bit easier for you so i'm going to do this i'm going to right here uh let's say that this will be class um we can say this is video number uh i believe this video but number seven you can either do this or you can write for example uh, variables so as long as you put something meaningful there uh, it's going to be okay for you so in this case i'm going to class no i'm not going to class variable because it's going to confuse you in the future so just put here variable zero one usually don't use numbers but i want you to understand so if you want to go back hey i want to study uh, about variables you know where variable is located so let's just put here uh, variables 01. I'm not sure how many we are going to use, as many as we need. And then remember, this is a class, it must be public. The name of the class must match exactly the name of the file. If you want to change the name, you have two options. You can either through here or here, and you click here on refactor. And then you have rename. Okay. You have to do exactly like this. Why? Because if you just change the name here, you can see the name of the file is different from the name of the class. Another option is just click here with the cursor and then Shift F6. And if you change the name here, for example, lowercase v, you can see that it's going to change the name of the file as well. So I'm going to press Escape to keep variable 01. Okay, now we need to tell, hey, Java Virtual Machine, you are going to start executing this algorithm exactly through this method. Remember the method public static void main string open brackets close brackets and then args. And remember you need to open also curly braces. Okay, pretty cool. Now we can start working with variables. The first thing is we have a syntax. To declare variables in Java, basically you have to tell the type. What is the type? Well, if you come back here, you have these types for now. And then after you have the type, you can either, uh, you need to give a name, and then you can either initialize, or you just tell, hey, I'm going to use your data. But basically the syntax is the type plus a name, a meaningful name. Now, let's go back. Let's start with integer how do we declare first all those words that you saw here they are keywords it means you cannot use this as identifier you cannot name a variable byte you cannot name short because they are words reserved by the java so i would just tell hey the type i want the operating system to create in memory will be for an integer it means that it's going to allocate how much space there it's going to allocate four bytes and then i need to give a name so this is extremely important right now we have like a pretty small algorithm but in a few let's say weeks you are going to have 
hundreds of lines. And then if you don't know what's written, what's the meaning of the variable you created, you are going to be in a pretty tough uh, spot. So for example, if I just put here X, okay, is this a valid variable declaration? Of course it is. If I add semicolon, you can see, hey, my program's not uh, telling that I have any problem. Because if I don't go to the semicolon, we have an error here. You see, it's saying, hey, if you try to execute this program now, it's not going to work. Even if you try, Control Shift F10, you can try, but you are going to get an error. Say, hey, you need to use a semicolon, you need to finish the line. And then when you do this, you can see there are no more compilation errors. It means that your program is syntactically correct. So if I just press Control Shift F10, it will execute. But what is this program doing? Nothing. I'm just saying, hey, I would like you, operating system, to just create a space in memory where I'm going to store an integer. But I'm not storing anything. So basically, uh, we are just uh, wasting space in memory. But after that, we don't have to worry because it's going to be cleaned up and this space is going to be returned uh, to the operating system as a free space to be used later. Okay, so we have the type, then we have the name. Now we have a convention for this. Yes, we do have a convention for this. What's the convention for naming variables? It's what we call camel case. So the first word, uh, the first word of the first letter should be lowercase. And if you have more than one word, each subsequent word must have a capital first letter. For example, if I want to say age of a person, so we have here, we, we usually try to remove articles. So it would be like age person. If you want to have age of person, you can also have something like this. But can you see that every time I have a word, the first letter after the first one should be a capital letter. So coming back to something meaningful, if I want to create a, a variable, I want to give a meaningful name. So if I want to have like an age, I will just give the name age. Okay, so now how can I give value? This is called initialize. So how can you put something in memory there? In Java, the initialization of a variable or assigning a value to a variable can be done through the equals sign. So in Java, the equals sign, it doesn't mean equals. In Java, if you want to compare two things, if something is equal to each other, you use double equals. But we are going to talk about that in future videos. So right now, I'm going to assign, say, hey, operating system, just allocate a space in memory that will be an integer. And I'm going to have this as the, the name that I'm going to use is age. Now, when I say here, hey, operating system, just store, just create an integer, the operating system actually doesn't matter about the type. What matters uh, is that the JVM is going to see, hey, this is an integer. So it means that you cannot put something else. If you try to have like a, a string, you are going to have a problem. So basically, I can only use uh, whole numbers here. Then I can give any in age, like 27. So basically, I'm telling here, um, I want you to create in memory a, uh, a little space, a variable that's going to store an integer and the value that I'm going to use there is 27. So if I execute this program right now, it's going to give me blank. Why? Because I did store something in memory, but I'm not using. So let's go back to our draw.io and see what's happening. So basically I have here int age. Why do we have the name age? Because once you have something in memory, you need to access it. So basically, memory is something chaotic. We, you have no idea how it's located in memory. So to retrieve something you store, you create a name. And this name, you are basically having a reference. And this reference is going to know where it's located. So you are telling the operating system to create a small space for you there. This small space will have four bytes. And then we are initializing with the store, the, the store, the value that I'm going to store here was 27. And then uh, we have like the name age. So if we want to access this tiny little space again, we just have to use the name that we gave in the beginning. 
Let's see how that works. Let's go back to IntelliJ Community. And then how can we actually print? Let's say I want to show the age to someone else. I want to see it in the console. Now remember, to show something is system out println. IntelliJ is giving us the parentheses and the semicolon. And now how do I print age? So in the previous video, we used something like this. So if I just do age, what's going to happen? In Java, everything that is between double quotes is considered a text, a string. If I execute this now, I'm not going to get the control shift of 10, the age back. I'm going to get the, the literal text age. So when you want to refer to a variable and you want to show the value, what should you do? You should not use double quotes. And now I'm telling, hey, I would like you to print. And I would like you to print whatever is stored in the variable called age. Now, if I press Ctrl Shift F10, we have the value 27. If I change this to 11 and I press again, Ctrl Shift F10, we get back 11. So basically, every time you want to print the value that is stored in memory, you just have to use the variable name. So that's why I'm having here a meaningful name. Now, if I change here um, to X and X, if you ask someone, hey, what's the meaning of X? So unless you tell them there is no meaning for X, unless it's something that you are doing regarding mathematics, uh, probably you will be pretty confusing. If I want this to be like an age of someone, or if I want this to be, for example, a salary of someone, you don't need to explain. So if I give this exactly program to someone and you, for example, ask, hey, what do you think this program has here? What's it doing? Uh, if someone reads it, say, hey, looks like the salary is like uh, 1100 and you are kind of printing something related to this 1100. So this is a high level program. You can understand just by looking at it. And now if I execute again, Control Shift F10, we get 1100 back. Okay, so I think for this video, that's it. In the next video, let's continue the topic about variables. So I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.